Hi, I'm Pete. Welcome back to my channel. So the weather is finally getting nice and it's time to clean up the shop. And the best place to begin is right here with a thorough clean out and tune up of my Powermatic table saw. So let's get started and let's have some fun. I've been super busy here in the workshop, completing over a dozen projects for clients and friends. With all of these projects happening back to back, I've been a little bit negligent on keeping the shop clean, especially with my most important tool, my table saw. So in this video, I'm gonna start a long overdue cleanup and tune up of my Powermatic PM66 table saw. Step one of the cleanup is to remove all the tools, accessories, and scraps that have accumulated over these many projects. Next, I remove the router table and both extension tables so I can have full access to the table saw. Next, I remove the blade guard. I then remove the blade so I can have full access to the inner mechanicals of the saw. As you can see, there's quite an accumulation of sawdust inside the saw. Clearly, the dust collection on these older table saws isn't very good. If left unchecked, too much sawdust could cause motor failures by overheating the motor. Caked up and accumulated sawdust can also negatively impact your saw's performance. I like to use compressed air to blow all that sawdust off of the internals. I take extra care to get to all those hard to reach areas. Now I remove all that sawdust accumulating in the bottom of the saw. Once the bulk of the sawdust is removed, I can grab the shop vac and get all the remaining sawdust out from the saw. With the bulk of the sawdust removed, it's now time for a visual inspection. The first thing I noticed is some rust buildup on the support tabs for the insert plate and the inside edges of the miter slide. Rust is the number one enemy of these cast iron tabletops, so it's best to stop the rust in its tracks. I like to use some 120 grit sandpaper to get rid of the rust. With the rust removed, it's now time to focus on lubricating the internal mechanisms. I apply white lithium grease to the blade height and tilting mechanisms. I then work the mechanisms back and forth several times this helps ensure that the worm gears are fully lubricated. With the mechanisms fully lubricated, it's now time to calibrate saw blade height and tilt angle. The specified maximum depth of cut for the PM66 is 3 and an eighth inch, but mine's coming up short at just 2 and 7 eighths inches. I locate the blade adjustment height screw, make some fine-tuned adjustments to get my saw blade height up to a full cutting depth of 3 and an eighth inches. I now use my digital angle finder to set my tilting mechanism stops at 90 and 45 degrees. Well, that's a wrap for today. We got the saw cleaned out, all the sawdust out of it. We got the height adjustment mechanism and the tilt adjustment mechanism all greased up, looped up with some white lithium grease. Tomorrow we'll come back and we'll do some uh, checks on the table and its alignment with the, with the blade and also with the rip fence. See, make sure that everything is lined up square. And then we'll give everything a nice coat of wax. So we'll see you tomorrow. So today what we're gonna do is we're gonna check the saw blade and make sure that it's aligned with the miter slots. It should be as close to parallel with the slots as possible. Then we're going to check to see how, how close to parallel it is with the rip fence. And it may do some adjustments there. So let's get started. The first task today is to check the squareness of the table saw blade to the miter slots. Step one is to mark one tooth of a table saw blade as a reference. I'm using this dial indicator kit from a -Line It. It has measurement resolution down to a thousandth of an inch and it makes aligning the blade to the miter slots so much easier than using a square. This tool's available on amazon.com. I'll put a link in the description below. 
To fine tune the alignment, you need to loosen three bolts that are holding the tabletop to the saw. With the bolts loosened, you can use a rubber mallet to gently nudge the table into alignment. This may take some trial and error and many tries to get right. Mine's now at three one thousandths. That's pretty darn good. I now use the same dial indicator to check the alignment of the rip fence. I want the rip fence to toe out by just a few one thousandths. Fine adjustments to the rip fence are made with these set screws. So after playing around a while with the adjusting screws on the rip fence, I was able to get it adjusted to about three one thousandths open on the outfeed side. So now that that's adjusted, let's check to make sure the distance to the blade is accurate on the rip fence and the scale. I set the rip fence exactly 10 inches from the saw blade. I then positioned the rip fence indicator at exactly 10 inches and tightened it down with a screwdriver. I checked the distance from the blade to the rip fence against the readings on the scale for accuracy and I checked it at a couple locations and it all looks good. Now that the saw is all cleaned up, tuned up, and an adjustment, it's now time to put some wax on the table and on the wear surfaces like the rail and the rip fence. So let's get that done right now. I like to use Johnson's Paste Wax. I've had this can for a long time. I understand it's pretty hard to find nowadays, but if you do have this or you can find it, it's really great for your table saw tops and for the rails and the rip fence. So let's go ahead and apply some wax right now. Next, I'd like to apply wax to the rail that the rip fence rides on, both on top and on the side. These are the points with the, that the pads on the rip fence ride. I let the wax set up about 20 minutes before buffing it out. With the saw all waxed up, it's time to make sure everything's operating smoothly. Well, there she is. The PM66 is all cleaned up, tuned up and calibrated and ready to go for a new season. After a full clean out and tune up, my old PM66 is running like new again. These old saws like the Powermatic 66 were really made to last. With some routine maintenance and cleaning, they'll last a lifetime. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please remember to give it a thumbs up and please subscribe to be alerted to future videos on my channel. Thanks again for stopping by and I look forward to seeing you soon.